On First Down, you'll hear interviews with some of the top minds in sports, as well as actionable tips and strategies you can implement into your daily life to become a more effective coach. Thanks for spending time with me today. Now, let's jump into the content. Today, I'm here with Coach Thomas Riley. Thanks for coming on, Coach. Thanks for having me, Coach. Pleasure to be here. Coach Riley is the quarterback's coach at Bishop Blanchett, which is in North Seattle. To kick things off, Coach, can you just share with the audience about your background and how you've gotten involved in your current role? Yeah, so I um, I started playing football when I was around nine years old in North Seattle, so I've been around the game for a long time. Uh, when I got to high school, I actually attended Bishop Blanchett High School, uh, so that's my alma mater, which has been a great experience getting back there coaching. Um, after high school, I played football at the University of Puget Sound in Tacoma, the D3 uh, liberal arts school. I played quarterback there for two years. Um, and then after some injuries, I left the school, um, kind of left college and ended up getting back into a community college several years later. Um, and as I was graduating from the community college, getting ready to transfer into UW, uh, University of Washington, that's when I saw that the quarterback job was open at my alma mater at Blanchett High School. And Coaching is something I've always been passionate about. Uh, I used to coach Little League baseball teams with my uncle Tom. Um, I've been coaching my little brothers, you know, Pop Warner teams when I was in high school myself. So I knew that was something I wanted to get into, but sometimes you're not exactly sure how to go down that path, right? Unless you have somebody who's pulling you in. Um, and you don't always feel as confident in the X's and O's or the ability, you know, why should they trust me more than someone else? And so kind of dealing with, that I decided to just take the shot and go for it. Um, and I got hired about, I'd say a week before the first COVID shutdown. So our first season got ended up getting pushed to the spring. So I wasn't able to get in with the guys as much as I would have liked, but um, it's been a great experience so far. And this is going on my, just finished up my fourth year um, coaching varsity. So I'm excited to go into year five. Really cool. So when did you graduate from college? And, and also for the audience watching too, we we have a familiarity with Division three football because I played at Gettysburg. So, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, when when did you graduate, Coach? Yeah, so I graduated high school in 2013, and then I just graduated college this past summer of 2023. So I took the entire decade to do it, but I finally got it done. Awesome. Uh, and just graduated from the University of Washington this June. So that was a huge accomplishment. And I was excited. I uh, um, had some of the best, you know, times in school just at the very end, you know, Got my first couple of four quarters all the way across the last two years when I was in dub. So uh, very grateful that, you know, they gave me that opportunity. Awesome. Well, that congratulations on that. That's a huge Thank accomplishment you. Appreciate for sure. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being a few years into coaching at this point, what, you know, what have you learned over the past few years and, and what advice would you maybe give to somebody who's just getting started off? Yeah, I think that when I first started, I was very unconfident in scheme and X's and O's because you only know what you know, right? So I played in an offense in college that drew the ball 55 times a game. So I felt pretty comfortable with passing concepts and stuff like that. But I didn't know as much about the run game. And I didn't know about, uh, you know, what they were running at Blanchett. And they're running a lot of RPOs and they're running a lot of stuff that I didn't really get the opportunity to run. And so not having the ability to come in with a, a tool chest of knowing all of this stuff. It can be kind of intimidating, but the biggest piece of advice I would give people is, you know, seek out, seek out help. What you want to do is you want to find a couple older guys, right? Uh, maybe some guys that coached you or some guys that, you know, you came up with um, and make sure you're picking their brains and asking questions because there are no stupid questions. What happens is sometimes I feel like, you know, it happens with our kids too, where, People don't ask questions because they don't want to look like they're asking a stupid question, like they don't know something that people are talking about, like everyone should know it, right? Like it's gospel. So I think that even asking the stupid questions is really useful because you're going to get into a game and the kid's not going to know what to do and you're not going to have the right answers for them. Uh, so I think it's really important that you ask those questions and just keep trying to build that tool chest and write things out. Definitely. And that actually, that's a good segue into what you're doing with Playbook, Playbook um, Clinics. So can you talk about that and like, how that's been a good situation for you coming in, coming from coaching? Yeah. So one of my, uh, one of the coaches on the staff actually started this company this past still in spring. It's called Playbook Clinics. We're going to be doing 15 high school football coaches clinics across the country uh, this coming winter and spring. Um, and we're going to have topics on X's and O's, but we're also going to have a huge focus on everything outside of the X's and O's. 
So we're going to have, you know, always going to have rooms available for program development, culture, in-depth sessions, uh, strength and conditioning. So we want to make sure that we're touching on subjects like mental health, culture in the locker room, uh, the ability coaches who have turned around a struggling program have a pen with those guys. Um, we got sessions like, so you want to be a head coach for guys that want to make that step. Um, and so they can ask guys that have been through that maybe in the first couple of years or guys that have been head coach for a long time, you know, what goes into it? Because you'll never really understand the scope um, of what goes into it until you're, until you're wearing that hat. Um, and so to try to give the guys a leg up, um, we want to make sure that we're talking about all these different buckets. So we help people in their program or their, you know, um, their professional development as much as we do uh, with their X's and O's. Because at the end of the day, we're all here to, you know, help kids. Um, and so... I think the biggest thing that a coach can get out of the clinic sometimes is, you know, how can I motivate my kids? How can I help them in their daily lives? How can I help them in the classroom? Um, Because we get to see them as much as their parents on some days during the season. So uh, I think it's really important that we're prepared for those kind of situations. Yeah, and that's an interesting thing that you're doing there because that's the whole idea with this podcast is to get outside of the X's and O's and talk more about, like, culture and, you know, helping helping coaches maybe take that next step towards – whether it be like going from a coordinator to a head coach or, or from a position coach to a coordinator. Um, so what, what have you yeah. learned? And, and I guess, when did that, when did you guys officially get started? Was it just over the past few months? Yeah. So the company started a little bit before I got there, maybe in uh, March, somewhere around there, 2023, I came on in June. Um, and so when we, you know, when we started, we made a huge effort to talk to coaches. So we were always reaching out a lot of the guys that have, you know, watch this and probably got an email from me or one of my coworkers, you know, asking about, you know, we want to talk about your program. What are the challenges that face you as a coach and what do you want to hear about at clinics? Um, and so a lot of the answers that we heard from guys wasn't, they weren't necessarily talking about X's and O's. Like, you know, I want to know how to run triple option or help my midline. Uh, what they were talking about was I want to know how to deal with fundraising or to deal with my parents and my administration. Um, I want to help get my kids better in the classroom, but I don't really know how to go about doing that. You know, some guys are in, in the school, which is great. And in some places like Seattle, you know, only a couple guys in the staff are actually in the school and have the ability to have that impact on kids every day. Um, and so um, what coaches have really been asking about is that kind of, you know, outside of the X's and O's, outside of the sidelines. You know, what can we do to make our program strong uh, to help these kids now and when they leave? Definitely. <clears throat> And another cool thing that you just talked about was like fundraising. And that's actually a subject that I recently was talking about with a coach, actually my, at my alma mater, Malvern prep, which is outside of Philadelphia. And he was just talking about that. He's like, you know, in, unless, unless you've been doing it for a long time or you have experience in other fields, you know, it, it's tough to know what to exactly do. If, if you're a five, a or a six, a school, that's, you know, playing with a lot of money, it, you know, it, it's difficult. So I, I think it's a really cool thing that you're doing there, you know, just giving coaches those resources to, you know, not have to worry about that. And that's, I mean, that's the goal. You know, I, I think that should be the goal for every company that's involved in sports is like to help coaches just focus on coaching instead of having to worry about those other things. Exactly. And so, you know, I think it's huge that conversation is, you know, I think the number one way to learning from each other and, you know, outside of the sessions, even just the ability to talk with guys, but during the sessions, be having the ability to ask questions of a panel of guys or to have someone bring up something outside of the X's and O's that you haven't really thought about, you know, unless this guy is, you know, doing coach two or, or having, you know, has his own kind of writing or media uh, involved with his program. You're not going to really hear about the behind the scenes of, of what goes on. It's, there's no sport. There's not a ton of sports writing about, you know, the culture of, of a locker room at the high school level. Um, and so the ability for guys to, there's probably a ton of guys that have great things they're doing in their program, but you're never going to hear about it um, unless somebody gives them the platform to talk about it. And so we're trying to do so. We can help all these other schools that struggle in those areas too. Yeah. And I think, you know, at least from my perspective, you know, only, I only have one year of coaching experience officially, but, you know, taking some of those subjective items like culture and and trying to like improve it or, or just have information about that, whether it be writing or podcasts or or what have you, it's it's tough to quantify that. And you know, I think the more 
like you're saying, the more that people just talk about it and have conversations, you know, I think if if you're a coach and you're watching something like this, you know, you're you're gonna have more experience the more that you invest in yourself and invest in those types of resources because you know, some something like Playboy Clinics, that's it seems to me, and I, I haven't really dived too deep into it. It seems like, you know, it's a really cool resource to dive into those not so commonly talked about topics. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, that's what we're trying to give a platform to coaches for. So, uh, you know, we'll have a lot of sessions where it's going to be unscripted. We'll have our chalk talk sessions where it might be, we'll be at focus, but it'll have a moderator. So it might be chalk talk offensive coordinators or chalk talk defensive line or chalk talk linebackers. Um, and it'll have a moderator and it'll kind of have a guide so how to get through the session. But he's essentially going to say, you know, what do you guys want to talk about? Right. You know, like it might end up being more of a draw things on the napkin because that's what we've heard from a lot of coaches too is where have they learned the most? They learned the most at the bar with another coach who's walked them through something and drawn up on napkins. That's where they've had the most genuine interaction and the most time to ask questions and to be walked through it slowly because sometimes you can get a little lost with an entire session right and you can't really ask those clarifying questions because we don't want to interrupt and they leave two and a half minutes at the end so we want to make sure you know we'll have all of our kind of speaking engagements we'll have 30 minutes for speaking 15 minutes for q a at the end every single time uh but those chalk talk sessions are just going to be the ability to go hey like does anybody have any questions about playing quarterback today like what do you want to know what and so maybe quarterback coaches offensive coordinators come into that session and say you know i'm having a difficult time throwing on the run. It doesn't necessarily have to be the moderator so that answers that question, but it lets guys have more of a group conversation and promote some, promote more communication between the coaches. Definitely. Well, that, no, it's really cool stuff, coach. So any last words you want to share with the audience today, advice wise, or just, you know, about what you have going on with playbook clinics? Yeah. I mean, let's say my advice for other coaches is, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid to step into an uncomfortable situation. You know, we ask our kids all the time to go into uncomfortable situations. Uh, we're going to push them out of the comfort zone every day. So don't let yourself live in that comfort zone either. Um, you know, I've, I've had the ability to, you know, walk into a program that I already knew some coaches on the staff, <clears throat> excuse me, but even if you don't know coaches on the staff, you know, reach out. Uh, there's jobs where you don't necessarily have to be a position coach, right? Guys are always looking for people to help with film, uh, help with management of the roster. And so if you can get in somewhere like that, you can learn about coaching. You can learn about the X's and O's before you actually step up and feel a little uncomfortable with it. So um, if, you, if it's something you're interested in, something you're passionate about, uh, just make sure you put the kids first in these questions. Definitely. Well, Coach, it was a pleasure talking with you today and really appreciate you sharing your advice and, you know, experiences today. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.